against all the evil that hell can conjure. All the wickedness that mankind can produce, we will send unto them only you. Rip and tear until it is done. Yeah, so this is going on for longer than I spent on my no attacking run now. Oh, we did it! <laughs> I have got way too much fishing footage now. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, for the love of I did it again. Oh, it's Halloween! Wait, what? I have finally managed to get this bad gun. Oh! Oh my goodness! Oh! Excuse me? We just have to hope this isn't a hit. No! <laughs> oh! Oh, yes! Oh, ho, ho! Damage! This is exciting! Looking bad. What? <laughs> no! Oh, my Futaba! Woo! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are back! Persona's 25th anniversary will be upon us soon, and what a better way to celebrate than by punishing ourselves severely. Today you will witness the trials and tribulations of what it's like to attempt to beat this game without taking any damage. No physical health is to be lost, my mental health on the other hand is fair game. For those of you who have played this game before, you probably realise the scale of the challenge I've set for myself. Now, I'm not completely new to this kind of thing, go and see the video in the top right hand corner, but to say I didn't realise how bad it would get would be an understatement. Plenty of mistakes which cost me hours of my life and poor decisions which almost ended my run anyways were made. Made live on Twitch that is. That's right everyone, I'm over there on Twitch now so please do consider checking me out. Come on in and watch me do stuff like getting angry. No! <laughs> getting excited. <gasps> oh my goodness! And getting my stream actually functioning. Alright, you, you guys aren't seeing what I'm about to do. Let's just, uh... 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 Uh, you didn't see that. Just Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Why should you join me? Because you know I'm going to be covering all of whatever this ends up being, along with all the other things I plan on playing because my upload schedule is not consistent. While we are at it, did you know that only one <laughs> I can only, I can only do this presenter voice for so long. The rest of this video is me talking normally now. Now let's stop trying to make this my full-time career and lay down the ground rules of this run. First of all, if any party member has the health reduced by any means, I have to load the last save. This includes damage taken from attacks, uh, damage taken from status effects, and damage taken from performing physical skills. Uh, to put it simply, if this number goes down by anything, that's a reset. Rule number two, DLC Persona are allowed, however they can't be pulled from the compendium for free. Uh, otherwise this run would be straight up too easy, uh, something along these lines here. Rule 3, DLC accessories are allowed. If you watched the last run, you'll know the power of the camera strap, but we will also be grabbing a few other items to equip, so watch out for that. Rule 4, I can take damage in fights where I'm either scripted to lose, or if the damage is forced by the game. There are going to be some encounters where to demonstrate mechanics or to move the story forward, the game will hit us with damage. I'll point out when this occurs, uh, more so nearing the end of the game so it isn't too obnoxious. And finally, rule number five, it's a fresh save, no new game plus. There is no summon we can pull out of the compendium to make this easier. Everything here has to be earned. Before we begin, however, I do absolutely have to address some things from the previous run where I completely butchered some pronunciations. Shinji Oki is very annoying to deal with. Shaki Oji. I also switched to Izanagi Umaro Picaro when I was using all the items. Izanagi no Okami. Straight up, you can't get damage with Arahakabi in this fight, thanks to us now holding Arahakabi, the earliest being Arahakabi, Arahakabi, Arahakabi. So Arahakabi and his Makaran. 
Creed and the story of the godly Magmata. We now have the ability to buy Magmatas that deal 150 damage. Afterwards, I use the 150 damaging Magmatas to finish him off fully. Through 150 Magmatas, using a 150 damaging Magmata, I didn't have enough Magmatas. Simply, six godly Magmatas by the Magmatas, Magmatas, godly Magmatas, Magmata, Magmata, Magmata. Godly Magatama. In all, I had a lot of comments pointing out my ineptitude. Unfortunately, I'm a uni student with a heavy workload and a lot of my mistakes did slip through, but that is no excuse. So a massive thank you to all of those who enjoyed the video despite the mess ups, along with those who pointed them all out. No ill will to any of these people and my most humble apologies. A bit of a quieter thank you to those who took the opportunity to belittle me. I think this was my favorite comment here that reads, Wilbur Soot sounds like the crackhead version of Jack Benchy. And finally, a gigantic screw you to this comment here that goes, Man, why is this video so long? This is your daily reminder that the last time I checked, I'm not holding you at gunpoint to watch this video. But it's a perfect segue into how I've structured this one. I've split this one up into 10 to 15 minute episodes, so you can always come back easily to continue the adventure with me. And one more thing before we get going, don't expect a complete recap of this story. This video would end up going way too long and I'm not exactly the best at retelling the story while keeping it entertaining, so I do apologize. I must admit, I had a blast making this video, but needless to say, it did take a fair bit of effort. If you find yourself enjoying this video, let me know in the comments and please do subscribe. I'm going to be making a director's commentary addressing all the questions I get on this video, so please let me know down below. Now, let's get this show on the road. Can you beat Persona 5 Royal without taking damage? In the in the bini in the bininging yeah you know you have an idea for a good challenge run you want to perform right and generally speaking you kind of know the main hurdles you're going to face but a lot of the tougher problems that at least i have found are completely unexpected and happen after you've already committed to a plan making you waste hours of your life uh, see okumura's palace in the last run going into this run however i already knew that the bosses would be the hardest thing komashida will be hard for the fact that i can't switch party members out yaldabaoth will be hard because I can't nullify his almighty attacks and have to rely on evasions. It was quite obvious all of this, so I had a big surprise when literally a minute and a half into the run, I had already failed it. Welcome to the prologue, welcome to the first fight in the game, and welcome to the first reset. Yes, I'm keeping count, that number is going to get big. The first guy you face can absolutely hit you. You see, I wanted to make a big point in this run about trying to not give myself any grace period in the tutorial, and that leaves some situations early on that means I'm unable to get to a save point in between some of these first encounters. Every time I wish to redo this fight here, for example, because I haven't had a chance to save, I physically have to start a new game. Komashida's palace is full of these moments where we have to rely heavily on luck, but fortunately this changes in later palaces. At any rate, after failing attempt 2, we get extremely good luck with attempt 3 with this critical hit. Kasumi's introduction here also goes fairly smoothly, considering it's scripted with this critical attack. That's another thing with this run. Plenty of scripted incidents occur where stuff just happens, good or bad. All of the good ones, however, are fortunately in this early game section. Anyways, after being forced to take our Pfizer vaccine, we have two very important choices to make. This one, I already knew what I was going to do. Since Obama, I've done it. But the difficulty selection is a real concern here. Going into this run, I already knew that I had to end most fights on the first turn if I can help it. So do I wish to play on easy, where I do more damage, or merciless, where if I hit weaknesses and technicals, I do three times the damage, but if I don't, it's less damage overall. <laughs> Fortunately, you can change this in-game, so I start the game on easy for now, but I'll be switching to and fro depending on the situation. This is also why I didn't play on safe, as you can't change the difficulty after the fact. After having the most unrealistic scene of the entire story play, that being a teenager cleaning his room, we meet the principal and next day end up getting lost in Komashita's castle. Fortunately, we then get this wonderful, beautiful save point that stopped me wasting countless hours as we now have Joker's Awakening fight, a fight that we are going to be retrying a lot. 
This fight sees us tackling two jack o' lanterns. With us being able to take down one each turn thanks to easy mode, we must make one evade in this fight to avoid damage. But there is a problem here. We only have our starting protector to help us dodge attacks. This protector has an evasion of six. Now the way hit chance is calculated in this game, I'm a bit unsure of. I'm quite confident that this number is a percentage, but not certain. So let's just say it's very low. Now, alone, this isn't too bad. It takes me many attempts, but we eventually get there. Escaping the prison cell, we run into the world's horniest cat, and unfortunately, I am forced into Morgana's introduction fight. Unable to control him, I have to hope that he can successfully kill the enemies and dodge the attacks. Naturally, I didn't get it on the first attempt, but there is a problem here. Between the first fight and the second, there is no point you're able to save, meaning I have to restart all the way to before the first fight with Michelle, meaning that every time I want to attempt this second fight with Morgana, I've had to keep restarting again and again for the first. When I did my scouting run of this challenge, I wasted two hours alone here, so I was very happy that I was a lucky bastard and managed to beat this second fight on attempt two. After a quick fight where we learn about one mores, which thankfully means the enemies don't even get a chance to attack in this one, we get back to school, introduce ourselves, and move on to the next day, where we quickly find ourselves back in more tutorial fights. The gun and all that attack tutorials are guaranteed wins for us, and we can easily avoid any encounter here that isn't forced, but I try to complete them just for some easy XP gain. Depending on if I can hit the weaknesses of these fights, I switch to Merciless to more reliably finish them. Arsene learns Secunda at level 4, reducing the hit chance of enemies. This is fantastic for us because we are about to hit a stupidly hard roadblock in the form of the fights around Ryuji's Awakening. There is a forced fight before Ryuji's Awakening, which is one of the reasons behind Rule 4. That being fights where I'm forced to lose, I'm not counting them. They generally end with me taking damage anyways, and it fits the spirit of this run. Immediately after this, we go into the Awakening fight against the Guard Captain. Through playing this fight on Merciless, we can immediately take out the summons with Ryuji, and thankfully can lower our chances to be hit with Secunda on the enemy. The increased levels we grinded for beforehand also means that we can deal a bit more damage and with some good RNG, only allow the captain to have one opportunity to attack us. Too bad the odds are still stacked against us and a few restarts are forced here as he lands hits. Eventually, we get the dodge we are looking for and beat the fight. The main issue I had here was the time it took me to restart the fight, which saw me having to leave the game and reload it as it was the quickest option. The next few days play out like regular school days, but on 4.15, after some light interrogation of our own, we head back in to learn about recruiting new Persona, which begins to open up a lot of options for our run. For now, we do a little bit of grinding and recruit in preparation for Arn's Awakening fight. Namely, we gather the Persona Jack o Lantern for his Argy ability. This, in combination with Arn and the game set on Merciless difficulty, makes the boss here no problem and we take him down very easily. With a few more days at regular school passing, we finally get to complete Komashida's palace proper. With the infiltration into this palace beginning, we finally get access to fusion mechanics, allowing us to do this run properly. A lot of this challenge is all about using the correct personas in the correct fights, namely ones with good reflex, nullifies, and drains. Now, just to recall, I'm allowing myself to fuse DLC Persona but not pull them from the compendium because I could just pull Izanagi right now and make this a walk in the park, but I'm not going to do that because, I mean, I really haven't earned this challenge run then, have I? I'm also wanting Persona with good magic and agility stats, as we not only want to start fights but end them in the same turn. For skills, we are looking to at the very least have all elemental attacks on Michelle, but also to have accuracy and defense debuffs, along with attack and evasion increases. So, our mission for this palace is to have all of this for Komashida's fight. In terms of what I'm equipping everyone with, we're going to be using the ridiculously busted camera strap for the most part, thanks to its SP heal, it's quite good, but in boss fights we will switch this up depending on the situation, the big ones being the Hide Accessory, the Samurai Spirit, and the Nullify Blessing Curse. I'm also using the highest evasion protectors as well, but we will see more of that with itemization in the next palace. 
For now, we move through the palace at record speed. With Merciless allowing us to quickly beat enemies and SP not being a limiting resource, we should be fine. Like last time, West Building 2 is where we gain the ability to hide, and as such, you'll be seeing me do that a lot. With this ability, we fly through this area, ignoring that, and begin doing our Disaster Shadow introduction, a fantastic way for us to end fights quickly through technical damage. We then face the Heavenly Punisher. Now, here is a little mechanic for you all. Guarding in this run is absolutely pointless. Guarding does heavily reduce your damage taken, but also prevents you from dodging an attack, so I won't be guarding at all in this run. For this enemy here though, after I dodge his first attack, I get three turns to just lay damage onto him. So putting the difficulty back to easy just for this fight, I apply defense decreases and use everyone's magic attacks to put him down. Afterwards, we push through to the tower, grab the two keys from the required fights, which did cause me a little bit of trouble, and finally secure the infiltration route. I now had a fair bit of prep work for Kamashita's fight, so let me run you through it all in a bit of an explanation. So Kamashita's fight has a variety of phases, but fortunately he only has two main types of attacks, a single target physical and an all target almighty. The old target almighties only come out when we destroy the cup and Mishima is introduced, and with Shiho as well right after. Now that first almighty will always happen, the second one we can stop by taking down cognitive Shiho. Only one problem with that plan, not only does it rely on everyone evading the almighty attack, but we also have to dodge all of the physical attacks before we destroy the cup. Made even worse due to the fact that Komashita has two moves a turn and starts the fight. So we need to make this as efficient as possible. In terms of doing damage, we have a familiar face that can help us here in the form of Kaguya. Shining Arrows is one of the best skills in the game in terms of damage, and while we are fairly low level and far from optimal in terms of building for it, this skill's main strength is the fact that we can deal damage to everyone with it, Shiho included. It is also quite inexpensive as a skill, and we are going to want Kaguya anyway for her repel physical she gets later on. Unfortunately, we are unable to level her up enough now for that, so in terms of nullifying physical attacks for Michelle, I went with Shiki Oji. Shiki Oji is one of the best personas you can get for this sort of stuff with all of these nullifications. Only one problem with this plan, he is level 18, but quite frankly this was the best option for me. So along the way I also plan to grab one more DLC persona, Orpheus F. Picaro. She is actually one of the best persona introduced with the DLC in my opinion, for the sole purpose of her unique ability, Neo Cadenza, which acts as not only a 50% heal, but more concerningly, a whole party heat riser at level 13. To put how crazy this is in comparison, a similar skill, Thermopylae, yes that is how you pronounce it, is a whole party heat riser, but you can only use it when you're being ambushed, has a higher SP cost than Neo Cadenza, can only be gained at earliest level 38, and it doesn't even heal you! <laughs> After studying some more videos, I had finally planned the fight and how I wanted it to go. We now had to grind up to level 18. Now fortunately, I'm not the first person who has been tasked with grinding in the first palace. So knowing where to head, I put on a show and began to grind. After we obtained our personas, I jumped out of the palace, and over the next few days, I prepare by getting the best evasion protectors through the washer, along with making a spotlight or two. I gave everyone the hide accessory, which gives us a good chance that Michelle, who can nullify physical attacks, will get hit. Shining arrows will be great for damage, and I've mapped out the places that I can use it and Neo Cadenza safely. However, most attempts will immediately end with a fail, as we need Michelle to get hit first. Let's go for it. When I do release this video, I don't think it'll be particularly long. I can't imagine this video going more than an hour in length. Um, if anything, I reckon it's going to be a lot more smaller than that. We'll, we'll see when I do the edit. <laughs> 
yeah, so the issue with the Gauntlets is that we're just going to hope that he attacks Joker, which he probably won't. Or we just get in this. Yeah. Ah, uh, Ryuji again. That's every- Oh, it's at me! Great! Yes, we get an attempt! Oh my goodness! Alright, let's not mess this up. Cool! We're in it now. Alright, fingers crossed. Come on! Oh, Morgana that time. Ah. Uh. Drax. Yeah, so this has gone on for longer than I spent on my no attacking run now. Just because we went for good RNG. Seriously. Not fun. No. Oh, I didn't use... Oh, I didn't use Spotlight. Wasn't thinking. Uh, we've got uh, Null, Physical, and Joker that we want to get hit. Everyone else is wearing evasion stuff. Um, but essentially, we're just waiting for Joker to get hit to be able to at least start this fight. Uh, damage on anyone. Now, that's why this uh, first fight is initially just horrible. But, like, legit, I, I, as I was explaining before, I've done a run where I don't attack the entire game and I finish that, and a 300 hours of work went into that. And so the fact that I can now attack like, this run is a lot more fun for me to do, even though I'm, like, just waiting for good RNG. Uh, seriously, this is a blessing. <laughs> so everyone is wearing accessories that make it more likely to target Joker. Um, but they don't guarantee it. As I was explaining before, I've got a bit of a, a choice to make after this uh, palace, and that's whether or not, for these boss fights, do I bring in just Joker, or do I bring in everyone? If I bring in everyone, I've got all that damage potential, I can end fights easier, but whenever they do a hit all attack, I'm four times as likely to get hit. So I've got increased invasion, he's got decreased accuracy. Fingers crossed. I can make it vertical, wait, what, really? <laughs> okay, what else we got? Uppercase? I got no. Sorry, I'm just messing around with this now. Uh, do I dare change it to Comic Sans? I can make it in Persona font. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Oh, that looks good. Yes, we're, we're pinching that. <laughs> Hang on. I need to get... Uh, that's a really good idea. Okay. Yes. That looks really good. I like that. It's nice. And you know what I can do now as well? Hang on. We're going to do that as well. I'm plugging my Twitch on my own Twitch. So that anyone watching it in the uh, in the thingo can see who I am. <laughs> All right, here we go. At what point do I start considering the fact that it could be like actually impossible to not avoid damage in this fight? I think when we get to attempt fifty, I honestly don't. I honestly just think the um the the chances are low. That's the amount of times they've killed the run because they got hit by the ball. We're gonna start keeping track. Then I know who to blame by the end of this. Alright, we're starting out good. Watch me have set that all up right. Just so I can keep track of everything that's gone wrong. And like, this is the run where we do it. Um, okay, so new cadenza. Get ready to update the tally! <laughs> Let's go! Oh, we did it! <laughs> Okay, I shouldn't have increased the mic volume. I probably just ruptured some eardrums. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Did I not just say this? All right, we're going to breathe. We're going to take a deep breath. Oh, I get one more from that as well. I can't switch off. Kaguya. I might have just fucked this up. Uh-oh. Can we just kill him this turn? Okay, I think I screwed this up. No, I didn't. Okay, good. <laughs> Holy... I think we're good. I think we've done it. 
We gotta do a lot more damage than this. Let's do this! Persona! I was so close. <laughs> oh! Oh, yes! Oh, we did it! Yeah, I'm gonna need to just process this for a minute. That was good, okay. After that tedious experience, the rest of my free time was devoted to confidants. Mainly to Kemi, so that eventually we can get magical and physical ointments, and Ryuji for his insta-kill ability, so that grinding later on becomes pretty easy. When we get the option, we started Maruki for his detox ability, which will come in handy in cases where we get slept or raged, and after naming the thieves an appropriate name that I think not too many people are gonna get, we read a few books and moved on to the next palace. Our next mission is to take down Madarame in a palace that has a few difficult bits, but a boss that just relies heavily on luck. This palace offers us some new toys to play with. Not only are Persona traits unlocked, which will be immensely helpful later on when we get a special someone, but after we complete the initial palace infiltration to unlock Yusuke, we will then be able to remove people from the active party. Right, Welcome back to what I hope will be uh, the only day we spend on this palace. We've done Takemi. Um, I actually might just quickly dodge over to the clinic, so I can't remember what I've unlocked with her. I can't remember what she sells, mainly because the only thing I ever buy from her are like the heal alls and the, um, the SP adhesives, but we don't really need either of those right now. This ointment here, I have some, and I realized that, it's, that I shouldn't have bought any, because if I get burn, freeze, or shock, I would have had to have taken damage anyway. It's more these guys we want. So, Dizzy forgets sleep. There are skills that actually, like, inflict that onto you without taking damage, so at least it's recoverable. That's why I've got a few more of those. Haven't done too much planning for Madarame's palace, but I don't imagine it's going to be particularly difficult. It's mainly going to be we just have to kill the enemies fast enough. Yeah, I, I, I think this will be quite good. And I'm pretty sure in, I'm say in saying that... Uh, we're soon we're going to unlock some Velvet Room abilities. This palace offers us some new toys to play with. Not only are Persona traits unlocked, which will be immensely helpful later on when we get a special someone, but after we complete the initial palace infiltration to unlock Yusuke, we will then be able to remove people from the active party. This is a fantastic unlock, as it means we experience such a lower chance to get hit in some situations. At any rate, I think I need to preface how much I have played this game, yet act like a real idiot sometimes. Seriously, it must be nerves on stream or something like that, because I do make some stupid mistakes in front of everyone. I remember when I was doing the, uh, the no attacking run, this palace got a little bit annoying for me, just because I did that as I'm looking away. <laughs> Can I? Jump over it. <laughs> Shiza, I'm bad at this. Um, yeah, we're just gonna go Shining Arrows. I'm gonna hope this does enough damage. Oh! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, I just messed up and the game decided to hand me a bone there. Oh, that was lucky. That was so... <laughs> Okay. You're mine. Oh no, it's not dead yet. <laughs> Most of this initial infiltration is quite cruisy. We now get access to treasure demons to help us boost our XP gain. Unlike last time, we can actually kill these guys now. We get a few new persona during this bit just to help us later on, and we also grab the available will seeds in this initial infiltration. In reality, however, we only have two main problems with Madarame's palace before the boss, both occurring when we exit to do Yusuke's awakening. First of all is this security shadow here, which thanks to Merciless difficulty, I can quickly baton past to Michelle to do some serious damage. Alright, cool. <laughs> the main problem here is the Yusuke awakening fight. Fortunately, the minion enemies we can get rid of quite easily, but Ipondatra is immune to all things, so we have to get some lucky evasions. They're weak to ice, and I think they're also weak to bless, so that means Shining Arrows is a very good idea. Um, in terms of the guy in the middle, weak to ice also? I'm pretty sure he's weak to ice. Nope. 
Oh, he resisted. Oh! <laughs> okay! Lucky as hell! Yeah, that works too. A complete miss. Um... I don't know what to do against this guy. His turn next. Um, let's just hope for the shock. Now. Oh, Ryuji, you're amazing! <laughs> I should not be currently standing. Um, what are we gonna do? Do I just keep laying on damage? I imagine that just, just can't happen. Okay, we're getting really lucky with these evades. Alright, that was stupid lucky. Jeez. <laughs> That's all my good luck used. Like, the rest of this I'm expecting to go horribly wrong. Fortunately, we somehow managed to get them on our first attempt, which is so extremely lucky, I can't believe it happened. I managed to do all of that that I had been dreading in one go. Unlocking the ability to dismiss active party members now gives us a unique problem. What is the ideal number of party members to have in fights? The answer to this question is going to make or break our run, so I'm going to use the only method I know how to explain this. Math. So let's consider a party of four people versing one enemy with the following chances to evade attacks. Now if that enemy uses a single target skill, our chance to survive without taking damage is equal to the evade chance of that targeted party member. However, if that enemy uses a hit all attack, our chance to survive without taking damage is the total product or multiple of all of our party members evading chances. For each turn the fight progresses, we have to make another one of these evade rolls, and to put it very simply, the longer a fight goes on for, the less likely it is that we will end up damageless on the other side. So do we have all four party members, knowing that we can output damage and buffs like no tomorrow, ending fights fairly quickly, but realising that if anyone performs a hit all attack we are basically stuffed? Or do we have as few party members as possible, even just having Michelle by themselves in some cases, to not even worry about hit all attacks? On top of this, we haven't even begun to consider things like barrier skills, affinities and resistances, taunting effects, the number of enemies and their individual skill sets, stuff that influences evasion and accuracy rates, status ailments on enemies, their HP values, their weaknesses, the difficulty of the game, one mores and baton passes, for crying out loud, Futaba's abilities that are so useful here but they only come up in the most specific cases. There is so much to unpack here, but I'm going to put this simply for you. For normal infiltration, I have everyone to deal damage, for mini bosses I have just Michelle for complete immunity against their specific attacks and skill sets, and for palace bosses it's going to depend on how they operate. Back to our job however, the rest of this palace is namely puzzles. The moving paintings are quite easy once you familiarise yourself with the movements, and the Sayori puzzles in the distortion I cheated and looked up a guide, but third eye in your own eyes is basically what you're using here. Unfortunately we can't grab the will seed here as we don't have the damage output, but Madarame's ring is quite useful for avoiding damage and you'll see me buying it later on. With the route secure, I quickly did an itemization with Kaguya, which produces the highest evasion protector for female characters. Having this very early on in the game will help us cut down the number of attempts needed to beat some RNG reliant bosses, and we will be saving so much time, especially as the most useful characters in this run are Arn, Makoto, Haru and Kasumi anyways. Ryuji is the only other to be particularly useful, only due to his attack increasing buffs, but with auto Tarakaja later on, he won't be seeing too much action. With that all out of the way, we send the calling card for Madarame. Madarame is an interesting boss for us, just because the first phase is the real worry. His first phase consists of 4 paintings with 300 health and with different affinities. This means that while I can shining arrows and damage heavily 3 of them, they won't die immediately and one of them will be healed. Now, the healed painting has the ability to revive enemies, but with limited HP. Essentially, if we get some good luck with the evades, damage rolls and enemy actions, it won't be a problem, albeit a little grindy. Second phase has enemies with weaknesses, meaning we can baton pass for some amazing damage, and surprisingly, this went much better than expected. So this bit shouldn't be too hard, I'm pretty sure I get first turn. And basically, I just hit him with this. 
I thought that would have done more damage, if I'm being completely honest. Oh, good evasion. I forget he has the, uh, he has the evasion thing. Oh, yes, that is awesome. Evade everything, Joker. Thank you. All right, everyone die now. Yeah, I guess Mapsy. Oh, I didn't take him out. We could be screwed. Actually, this is possibly the best option. Because at least that's not an attack. Oh, that might not be enough. Bugger. Okay. Well! <laughs> you know, this will just regen, but I don't care. Alright, we got through first phase. That was good. That was really good. Whoa! You know, the grind might... I might have to worry about it if it keeps up. Let's start with a Neo Cadenza. And then we can... We're gonna baton pass until we get another Shining Arrows. Uh, so... Yellow is weak to green. And now me. And we're just gonna rain hellfire. Oh ho ho! Damage! Really good damage! Okay. Alright, we've got more copies out now. This is fine, because this should be fine. Uh, do we have a Molotov? We most certainly do. The one thing I'm known for, Molotovs and throwing them religiously <laughs> for that one, that last challenge run. Cool, because that means I can pass it to uh, Morgana and I can get a one more. And now I can pass it to me. Alright, this might finish the fight. This might just be it now. <laughs> we did it! That only took three attempts. Wow. Okay. Go team. With Madarame done in a very economical time, we spent the rest of our days mainly buffing my social stats for later confidants. However, a fair bit of time was spent again on Ryuji, building towards his insta-kill which we do end up getting. Like last run, it's a fantastic time and resource saver, and means we can completely avoid the possibility of taking damage in low level encounters. Alongside that, we work on Arn, as she'll be a fantastic damage dealer soon, Takemi to get one step closer to her level 10 items, and Maruki because I really didn't want to forget to get him done just for this video. <laughs> Finally, we get some baton pass upgrades, and more importantly, technical rank increases. Technicals get stupidly good with Makoto joining our party next palace, so I'll be exploiting them to death, but none of this could prepare me for what was about to lay ahead. Kanashiro's Palace provides a few unique challenges with its fight. A lot of enemies, including the boss, have very high health pools with no weaknesses, so maxing out damage through any means necessary will be a major theme in this chapter of our run. As such, exploiting technical damage on Merciless will be our go-to, especially considering we now have a technical rank of 3. We can do more damage and have a chance to knock down enemies, which is very vital in ensuring enemies won't get turns to attack. The first infiltration when we unlock Makoto is where we use this tactic, especially the Chivalrous Fiend fight featuring three waves. The tactics here are Dormina or Sleep Files on all enemies, comboed with Shining Arrows to do some serious damage. The Water Fiend you face in Makoto's fight is weak to nuclear, meaning we can do even more damage through Baton Pass and quickly clean this up. 
Next day, we head back into the palace where we have a bit of a dilemma. We have an introduction into Showtime mechanics. Now, unlike last run, we actually get to use these and they are tremendously helpful when they do come up. But how Showtimes are decided to be given to the player directly ties in on the current health of party members. The lower the HP on Joker or that party member is, the higher the chance a Showtime attack will be presented. Now to illustrate this, this fight features a forced attack which cannot be avoided by any means available to us at this point in the game. Morgana has to take this damage here, so I guess run over? Well, here's the thing, and I didn't realise this, after the fight, Morgana gets his HP back. Um, I don't even- wait, no, it, he heals himself after that battle. Excuse me? Yeah, no, fair enough. The game gives you a heal. So, in a weird sense, this isn't damage taken, but technically is, and it's also scripted and forced. I just wanted to point this out, as this is the reason we have that rule 4. Regardless, infiltration in this palace includes a fair bit of puzzle solving and forced enemy fights for key items. Getting our initial ID card involves taking down Aerobus, which is a very easy fight owing to the increased weakness damage. Taking down all the enemies on the way to the vault, we first work on Tornado Devil with a weakness to electricity but a very high health pool. For this fight, it's stun gun to sleep and then to shining arrows. We quickly end him, along with the water demon just like in Makoto's Awakening. Heading into the Banker Passageway, arguably one of the most annoying areas in the game, we evade basically everything while grabbing the wheel seat and quickly making our way to the laundering office and its safe room, as we are about to face the hardest infiltration fight for this palace. Uh Let's just get some shining arrows going out. Just get some damage down. <laughs> Complete miss and that one takes not lethal basically. Okay. Yep. Another option is just getting something that's gonna sleep everyone. Um, and we're almost at that point where we can fuse Ra Raul just for that purpose. It's just gonna be expensive. That's the only problem. Like millions of yen expensive. Ah! Oh. Seriously? Okay. Sleep. <laughs> yeah, you know how I was saying before how like it is possible to miss those? There's your evidence. Um, I'm then going to... Probably just pass to Arn and get a sleep. Oh, that's tempting. Yeah, we're doing that. That is... Good timing. Alright. Very good. The final area, the vault, features us inputting the correct codes into four keypads. We cheat through this bit by looking up the answers online and fly through. The reason I'm going very quickly here is because we have a lot of preparation to do for the upcoming fight. You see, we are finally high enough level to complete the Strength Confidant up to level 5, unlocking the ability to complete higher level fusions for a fee. This gives us access to so many skills and ways to tackle things heading on, it's kinda ridiculous. So having secured the route and looking at the skills Kanashira can use, that being physical, gun, fire and almighty, we grinded in mementos as we now have access to insta-kill, enabling us to fuse Rangda. The idea here is that the only thing that can do damage now is the hit all almighty attack, so I just bring Michelle into the fight in order to give me the best chance to evade. The problem is, even though we have Neo Cadenza and defense decreases, we do so little damage and have so little chance to evade. Did that timer just show, like, negative minutes? Um, I've got no idea what just happened there. Alright, you know what, we're just gonna go for it. So, I have been off stream. I have done a lot of grinding. Um, basically I want to cry right now. So yeah, I can bring people to help me with the all mine attacks. The only problem is they're probably gonna get hit by the physical attacks that he can do in the fight. Um, and so genuinely, I believe it's best that I just bring myself. Because I can ref- uh, Michelle, sorry. <laughs> Forget I'm calling him that. Genuinely because it's just gonna be, if we can avoid that first bit, the second uh, bit of this fight is gonna be stupidly easy because it is just a uh, physical attack and we reflect those. There's nothing they can do to me otherwise. So if we get past that first phase, we're gonna be all good. We're gonna slide that one. 
We'll chuck it up here for the time being. Um, but I still haven't sent the calling card, so I will do that in just a tick. Yeah, the only issue is, is that because we can't do the special orders, we're gonna have to, um, avoid the almighty attacks. And so I've got a few things to help us with that. I've got decrease evasion and accuracy. I do still have Orpheus in my party for Neo Cadenza, um, which is gonna help us a fair bit. So I'm really gonna do the boss today. If I do it in 10 minutes and like, like that's it, then that's just the stream there. It could take anywhere up to hours, um, but I'm only gonna keep it at this for now anyway. So I genuinely am just gonna start with just buffing things. I'm not quite sure how this fight exactly goes again, uh, but pretty much we just want to deal as much damage as we can, and the reflex is most certainly going to help. I've got this. Uh, and then hopefully we evade this. Which we didn't. Uh, and that is how this is going to work, basically. And we hope for the evade. Nope! <laughs> I really hope an evasion is possible here. Um, I haven't actually tested if that's like scripted or anything, but I'm pretty sure you can evade that. Yeah, I don't think this one should take too many attempts. At least I hope it doesn't. <laughs> um, I have one other option if this doesn't work, and that's getting, uh, Taunting Aura on Joker somehow. Now I can do that two ways. I can do that through skill mutation, or I can do it through accessories. The skill mutation option is fairly high level, I'm pretty sure. Like, you have to be um, doing a high level percent to even, like, get the chance of getting that. I'm pretty sure the accessory option is as well. So, ra I'd rather not do either. I'd rather this just work. Alright, let's see these damage numbers here. 272. That's different, I'm pretty sure. Look, I prefer this challenge just because I get to actively use most of the mechanics in this game, right? Oh, that was a miss. Okay. This challenge can be a lot more frustrating at times. Namely because this challenge has a fail condition where the other ones didn't. Okay, if I take... Alright, I didn't take damage there. I would have thought um, he was going to attack more. He keeps going into this form. Okay. Issue. That's quite a big issue, actually. <laughs> 420 and just dead immediately. So, if I go down the Joker only rat, what I've basically said is that fusing Ragda was completely useless and just a waste of four hours. <laughs> because it doesn't matter that it's a reflect physical and gun and null fire persona, because he's not gonna do physical gun and fire attacks because he'll just spam Almighty. Basically, that's what we've learned. <laughs> yeah, and option two is just use everyone else. But I don't think this is gonna be great. Because this happens and there's nothing I can do against it. Except for hoping that they both block. Okay, good job, guys. Alright, good job. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I went back to the drawing board. The one good thing about this palace is that money is of no concern. Thanks to us having the Sun Confidant ranked up, we can ask Shadows for extra money during negotiations. In this palace, there is a fight with only High Pixie. With the camera strap, we can infinitely knock down these enemies, accost them for money, and then eventually when we fail, we are punished by the summoning of more High Pixies. All of which we can do without taking damage as High Pixie knows only heal and sleep. So, with hundreds of thousands of yen, I decided to grab the skill Ali Dance. Ali Dance is an ability that greatly lowers the defense of one enemy. At least, according to the description, this wording is actually incorrect. There is a wonderful post on Reddit discussing the evasion statistics and how they work in this game. Essentially, Ali Dance affects the accuracy of any enemy attacking that player, and it gives a 50% chance to avoid any attack. Having this right now is extremely useful. By getting this through Raoul as well, we also obtain a high damaging skill and a sleep all attack that will be extremely useful in later palaces. So we head back into this fight with a better chance to dodge attacks and a quicker way to end it.
Oh no. Okay. We just have to hope this isn't a hit. No! <laughs> oh, come on! I'm doing this off stream now. Basically because like I do not want to subject any of my viewers to three more hours of this nonsense. And so hopefully we get the clip uh, today. Oh! 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 Hang on! We might be done! Oh, I really hope we roll well now. Are you s Oh, thank God! <laughs> he gets the first move. Oh, thank goodness. That could have been bad. What?! <laughs> I really wanted to end the run after that, but I carried on. I decided one thing I could do to speed this all up is to increase Kagi's attack through Concentrate, Bless Amp, and Bless Boost, gaining these through the itemization of different personas. With this, I had to perform another grind with High Pixie, but it was worth it, as we have increased Kagi's attack by a substantial margin. There is a lot of damage coming out here now. Maybe, just maybe, this would be it. After a lengthy fight with some lucky evades and some incredible damage, getting to the second phase and avoiding one almighty attack, the boss is finally over and we finish this palace and manage to move on with the run. The rest of this time we have left we spend doing the most important activity of this run. Fishing. I'm not kidding. Fishing is the only way to get your hands on a one of a kind accessory, the Fishing God Badge, an item which grants Ali Dance to an ally. This is the best form of evasion we can get for our party members, so I spend the free time here and next palace to build up the necessary points to buy this item. This also builds proficiency so we can fish more. Hello and thank you for making it to the end of part 1. Part 2 will be out one week from this video's upload, so please consider subscribing to be notified of its release. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all around.